for those of you following on at uh, a home, um, you, if you do so, you do so at your own risk. Uh, I don't suggest you copy any of uh, this process unless you know exactly what you're doing. There are lethal voltages inside the unit and so if you do attempt to do this, like I say, you, you do it at your own risk. So today's project is to replace the Blu-ray drive mechanism and laser in this PlayStation. So this model is the CECHK01 and it was manufactured July 2008. So the PlayStation 3 and it's approximately 11 years old. So to gain access to the drive um, we need to remove the top and to remove the top cover first of all you have to peel off the, the uh, warranty label. That gives you access to the little rubber stopper that covers the Torx 10 screw that holds the lid on. So you have to remove that. Okay, so there's the little rubber stopper removed. This now gives us access to the security Torx uh, size 10 screw that will hold the cover on the top, the lid. So after we remove the Torx 10 screw we are then able to slide the lid off the off the top of the PlayStation. So we need to remove the seven screws from the top. And it's three at the front, three at the back, and then a fourth here, which is the short screw, which is actually labelled with an S and an arrow pointing to the short screw. The other screws are the same length and quite long. Once we've removed the screws from the top cover there's a clip here that needs to be pressed this in this direction to release the top cover. So there's the clip I don't know whether you can see it right down the bottom there. You just have to push that to release that clip and the lid will lift off towards the front of the unit. It will just hinge back towards the front. So it's difficult to do this with uh, one hand but anyway I've released the clip and the top just opens up to the front. Which you can then see the drive bay on the right hand side and the power supply on the left hand side. When you have the unit open like this, it's a good idea to uh, to brush some of the dust away that will have accumulated on the input or output from the airflow that goes through the um, the PlayStation. So now we're down to the Blu-ray drive on the right hand side and the power supply on the left hand side. There's nothing that holds the Blu-ray drive actually in place once you've taken the lid off. There's no screws holding this down so the whole thing will move. If you tip the unit it will drop out so be careful. If it does drop out, there's a good chance you'll rip the uh, ribbon cable. So, connecting to the 
Blu-ray drive down here you've got a little power cable which needs to be disconnected be careful though because I've heard that if you're not careful you can actually rip the socket straight off the board off the motherboard so you want to be very careful how you remove this then once you lift the drive carefully in my case one-handed you'll see the ribbon cable and the ribbon cable has a fold so it goes at 90 degrees and then up into the bottom of the Blu-ray drive here and that little black strip that little black strip there needs to be flipped up to remove the drive well remove the cable I should say so if we flip this up do it with the thumbnail and the ribbon cable comes out easily and we just need to do the reverse when we put it all back together so we put the ribbon cable back in and drop down the little black bar that holds it in place I'm going to put that down now to just keep it out of the way so now we're left with the drive we've put the console to one side carefully uh, so it doesn't get damaged and if my phone will focus here um, so we're left with the blu-ray drive there's a cable still attached which we're going to disconnect in a minute and the next process is to remove the top cover and to remove this top cover there are actually screws here here and then one here and here and you need quite a small screwdriver to remove these don't take this one out yet um, because that holds the bottom cover on once we've taken the other four screws out so I'm going to remove those now so with that top cover removed we can now see the loading mechanism and be careful about the little disc here the magnetic disc that will clamp the uh, disc in place uh, because that's loose there's nothing actually physically holding that in place apart from its magnetic uh, attraction to the uh, center spindle of the drive so when you're moving the drive around you can either take this out but don't forget to put it back and the next thing we need to do is uh, remove the power cable that's in the side here and again be careful that you don't pull the socket off the board so just pull that gently to remove it now we need to remove this screw here which will release the bottom cover there's nothing else holding the bottom cover in place now we have access to the control board and we need to remove the control board because we're going to keep that control board married to the motherboard and so we remove the control board and fit it to the new drive to remove the board we have to disconnect this ribbon cable which just pulls out this ribbon cable that goes to the laser by lifting the little black bar that will come out and then there's one more ribbon cable down here that needs to be detached so we pull that out and we pull this out gently and so we're now free we're now free to remove this board anything holding the board in place are two screws this one and this one over here so we remove those two screws and now those two screws are removed this board will come straight out and we put that to one side and get the new mechanism to install the board onto 
So we align the board that we took off the old mechanism and laser carriage um, and install it onto the new mechanism and laser uh, because this has to be married and is married to the motherboard so we have to use this even though this is a new mechanism didn't come with this board because the seller that um, sells the carriage on laser mechanism um, doesn't supply this because they know that the the boards have to be married to the motherboard so you need to have a working control board for this whole process to uh, to be of any use I've just had to remove a warranty sticker off um, the connector for the laser and it's left in a, a quite a bit of adhesive here. I wanted to remove it because it's got a metalized foil, uh, a metalized uh, backing, which um, I didn't want to short anything out. And the contacts are on the other side of this ribbon, but uh, this generally won't be an issue because it only contacts on the one side but the adhesive could hold it in place uh, when you come to remove it so I've removed as much as that uh, adhesive off this uh, ribbon you can still see some remnants of it so we need to reconnect our ribbon cables so I've reconnected the three ribbon cables this one just pushes back in You've got to be careful you hold a little blue tab here and slide it back into place this one has a little black bar once you push the ribbon into the connector you then drop the black bar down and that holds that in place and this one here the tiny one just slides in you hold the blue part and you slide it back into the connector gently because all these are very fragile So now we need to reassemble the unit, so the first thing to put back would be the bottom plate. And that sits snugly on the bottom. And we have to put this one retaining screw back. Make sure this disc is returned if it happens to have fallen out and then we can put the top cover onto the unit so now we can return our two silver screws here and here and our two black screws go here and here so this has to be pushed forward so that those screws can be uh, located correctly so now both the bottom and top covers are on, remember to reinstall the power connector into this little socket here, which is tricky to do one handed. And make sure it goes all the way in, because if it doesn't, you could well have a dead drive with no power. So now it's reassembled, we're ready to put it back into the PlayStation 3. So now we return the ribbon to the bottom of the unit. Insert the ribbon. And then once the ribbon's inserted, we drop the black bar down onto the ribbon. And we should have a parallel black line on the ribbon that lines up with that black bar on the connector. The ribbon cable, as I said previously, has a 90 degree bend in it. So we have to put the drive back down on top of that correctly.
so it's now it's now located and we're ready to put the connector power connector back into its socket make sure it goes all the way down so at this point we can actually test the unit without putting the uh, top back on and that's probably a good thing to do before we reassemble everything we can actually test it now and make sure everything's functioning properly now for the acid test as they say I can get the disc in <laughs> Let's see whether anything appears here. And yeah, there we go. So let's scroll down, and sure enough, there's Duke Nukem Forever. And then we check the disc. And I've just inserted a PlayStation 1 game disc. And there we go, it's read the disc. Okay, previously it wasn't reading any discs, um, not Blu-ray, not uh, DVD, it was reading nothing at all. So everything looks fine. Before I reassemble everything I'm just going to make sure the eject mechanism works okay. Which it does. i just check the load again. Can't see. <laughs> There we go. All right, so the load and eject appears to be working fine. So now I'm going to power down the unit. the power switch on the back, disconnect all the cables and put the tops back on. So to reassemble you line up these hooks with the front of the base of the PlayStation and then you just roll the top down onto the unit and providing everything's in place it should just pop together nicely which it has so putting it back together we reverse the process the three long screws at the front three long screws at the back and then the short screw right here so I'm going to do those up now next we line up the lid and slide it into place gently you shouldn't have any resistance on this so be careful because if you find you've got some resistance you may have something misaligned so remember you've got to align the security tab here down here and all the other catches that hold the lid securely in place so it should go together gently 
and then just slide on. Once that's in place, once that's in place, then we can just put the security torque screw back in the side and return the little rubber grommet. I'll do that next. So now the top's back in place with the security torque screw, the little rubber grommets back in place. Uh, the seal usually just peels off and remains broken, so I'm not going to worry too much about the seal. And now for the acid test one more time. Let's see if it powers up. Let's turn it on. And we have the red light. So we powered on successfully. Now to try a disc. Red disc. And there we go, Duke Nukem Forever. So there's the PS3 disc, uh, which I'm now going to reject. And try another disc, um, the PS1, PlayStation 1 disc, make sure it reads that correctly. So there we have the PlayStation 1 disc, and let's start that disc. Okay, so that's successfully loaded. So we've tested both Blu ray and DVD. Not that I'm recommending this company, but just for information, I ordered the drive mechanism and laser from Next Tech and they also supplied a uh, Torx 10 security screwdriver for aiding the installation and they gave uh, a one day delivery service too so pretty good deal and uh, I'm certainly uh, consider using them in the future thanks for watching if you like the video please give me a thumbs up and possibly subscribe too for more videos.